Buddy, I wasn't going to do a show today, but I feel like it's been like a really weird week, hasn't it? And we need to take stock about what's actually happening in the world. Mostly today, we're going to talk about Roe v. Wade and this bizarre bloodlust that's happening. And really what that's doing, and we'll get into a little bit more about this later, but it's permitting legal conscience and social approval for women to take the life in the womb. That's what they're really looking for. Now, we, of course, we know that we don't have to get our approval from men. We have a moral conscience as believers. And so, therefore, we don't need approval from men. And this whole incident with Roe v. Wade should be a reminder of that and help you to Look in, stare in the eye some of the other evils that happen under the guise of legality in our reality. And take a minute to maybe think about some of the things that we're allowed to do that we shouldn't probably be doing. So we're going to look at that. We're going to talk about that today. We're also going to look at this really cute puppy that I think is probably one of the cutest puppies I've ever seen. It's a coyote rescue puppy. And it was mistaken for another breed. It was rescued, and then they found out it was a coyote. There's a lot of that going on lately, isn't there? Remember that mystery dog that was rescued? And it was really just a coyote with mange, but at first they didn't know what it was. So that was weird. So more of those stories coming out as well. We're also going to talk about J&J &J now admitting that smack scenes can cause clots. And there's actually a warning about it. Now, for those that tried to warn about this in the beginning, they were canceled, weren't they? And now all of a sudden they have to disclose it because cases are coming forward. Now, glad everybody could make it today on Friday. And the first thing I wanted to start with is the rainbow timeline that we covered a couple days ago in which we overlaid the entire history of the Bible onto the colors of the rainbow. And in order, everything fell right into place, didn't it? We had Adam, which is Odom. Odom means red, clay-colored, beginning of time. Then we went into the yellow, which is purification, which was Noah. Then we went into green, which is the Abrahamic covenant that God had with Abraham to basically grow his seed to number in the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Then we had Jesus come in this bluish area, and his whole ministry was about water, wasn't it? It wasn't about stones, it wasn't about trees, it wasn't about any. it was about water. Water into wine, baptism, two fish, and the list goes on and on and on. The woman at the well. And then we are now in the purple rain. We're over here in this purple violet. Now, that's the quick recap, but if you want the full edification of this study, you definitely need to go back and take a look at the, I think it was a 45 minute video we did, of the history of the world overlaid onto the rainbow. And I, I'm glad that you guys enjoyed that decode. It seems to be pretty popular for a re-upload. Now, the reason why we're talking about it again this morning is because many of you mentioned indigo children. And where you thought that that might fit in to this timeline. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit today. So, if you remember correctly, we are in the Purple Rain era. That's where we're at now. The purple part of the spectrum. And many people believe that the indigo actually fell just before the purple. Right in here somewhere. Right after the blue. And I would argue that the indigo probably represents Jesus' ascension. And I'm going to tell you why. Because this was at the end of his life. So he came in here, lived a short life, and I believe that the indigo, as blue began to fade into indigo, that this was representative of his ascension and the timeline here. Now, the whole concept of indigo children I would be very careful with. Because I think that starts falling into like new age. And I'm not sure there's much biblical support for the concept of indigo children. Indigo is also a chakra color. Again, a place that we don't go to on this channel. 
Now, I know some people come to this channel and they still believe in those things, but I want to be clear. We do not believe in those things. I don't believe it's biblically based. But you're free to have an opinion here. And hopefully through time we can all study this stuff thoroughly and we can all gain a more solid footing and foundation about what all this stuff means. Now, here's what we do know about indigo. The indigo is actually a color that was worn or likely worn on the fringes of the garments of the high priests in the Old Testament. And it actually appears in nature in some pretty peculiar places. Now here's the video that we did on the entire timeline. I wanted to show this to you. It's called Rainbow Colors Align with the Biblical History of the World and the Secret of the Number 42. Definitely a video to watch there. But let's get into this indigo color and look at some of the of nature that actually has these colors. Now I want you to understand that in nature the indigo is depicted as these animals. This bird here is said to have an indigo color as well as some fungus fung, fungus fungus look at this bizarre inverted mushroom I don't know if it grows like that now it looks like the stalk is here but it's a definitely an indigo color and of course the snake now what, what would be the purpose of this well obviously this is the earth version of the color right and the enemy tries to always counterfeit and think about it the earth version would be like the the physical or matter whereas the sky version would be the spirit now if you think this is crazy listen to this ripe bananas actually turn indigo blue under a black light now they discovered this in 2008 they don't know why it happens but they think that it could have something to do with what's called structural color indigo is one of the only colors in the spectrum that can be created completely with light in other words there is no pigment in indigo, or you can make the color without pigment. They do have pigmented indigo, but you can actually make the color without pigment. Well, how do they do this? Crystal coatings, three to five layers, and they arrange them in such a way to where it creates color. Here's a great example. There's that same bird again with the indigo. It's not made from pigment. The feathers are not colored that way because of the pigment. It's colored that way because of these layers of clear cells. Some refract the light, some absorb it. And the color that you see with your eyes is indigo. In other words, a color created out of the sun. Basically, what you're looking at is a very limited spectrum of the rainbow. You're actually looking at a color in the rainbow when you see structural color. Because it's made from light. Now, this graphic demonstrates that. That the color of this bird's feather is because of this. Now, this is very common, actually, in nature. Here's a butterfly. And there you see the indigo on the butterfly. And... It's done by these layers of cells or this lattice work on these individual parts of the wing of the butterfly. There's the lattice work there. Now we've covered structural color in the past because beetles have this structural color ability as well. We were trying to decode the scarab beetle. And also some of these berries, there are berries out there that have this bizarre ability as well. The skin of the berries refracts the light with structure instead of pigment. So I thought this was worth revisiting. Just to check this out. Now, I think at this point, 
it's probably safe to assume that the indigo here on the timeline, let's go back to it so you can see this, right here, here's where Jesus came in the bluish, and maybe really he came in the indigo era. Maybe because the blue and the indigo are very, very close together. So maybe that's what this really is about. He is outside of color. He's in the rainbow, but not of it. He is the light, and he tells us that he is. So, that would make a whole lot of sense, wouldn't it? That when he ascended, he ascended in this color, because he transfigured from flesh, or the pigment, back into the spirit. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you, and... I'm open to hearing your thoughts on all this as well. So that was the follow-up from the rainbow video that we did. Now let's get into some of these other headlines here. Now this next story is just adorable. I mean, I was like, wow, what a cute puppy. Look at this little puppy. This is a little coyote puppy. And basically this family found this little puppy and mistaked it for a rescued puppy. Got the puppy home and realized that it was a coyote puppy. New England family brings home coyote pup after mistaking the wild animal for a lost puppy. Let's zoom in on this cute little face. Now I know a lot of people don't like coyotes and their menaces. But what do you do with a helpless little coyote like this? I don't know. Maybe you could domesticate it. I don't know. Um... I'm just trying to think of what Jesus would do, right? New England family didn't get what it bargained for when they tried to help what they believed to be a lost puppy at the end of April. The unnamed family accidentally brought home an eastern coyote pup last week after finding the animal wandering in distress by the side of a busy road. This was in Barnstable, Massachusetts. Upon realizing their mistake, the family reached out to the Cape Wildlife Center for assistance, according to a post shared Monday on the organization's Facebook page. Now the pup is recovering comfortably in one of the wildlife center's isolation wards. Problem is, is once you separate this puppy from its mother, it, it really does not stand a chance. They have to pretty much raise this dog or this coyote, sorry, and until it, you know, they figure it out. But notice this rabies aspect. We've been talking a lot about rabies, haven't we? They say the pup has not been exposed to rabies. But it's interesting that they mention that in this article. They said this was a happy ending. It could have gone much differently. And again, they mentioned rabies. Coyotes are considered a rabies vector species in the Bay State. So, kind of interesting, right? Could be bitten, scratched, or extended contact. They would have been mandated to euthanize the pup and test for rabies. We're grateful every single person who takes time out of their day to help wildlife when they are needed. So, there's a full-grown coyote, of course. The coyote pup will soon have a companion. According to Monday's Facebook post, a foster sibling has just arrived. Okay, that'll be interesting. Introduced to the tiny Massachusetts coyote. Once both pups receive their smack the nations. Ah, there's some programming going on here, isn't there? See how this works? These aren't just innocent stories. It's programming. So when the rabies, you know, <laughs> when the new rabies virus comes out, which probably will be on the horizon. Uh, you know, the programming is, oh, this is dangerous stuff. You could turn into a zombie. You better go get the smack the nation. So, I hope that doesn't happen. But that's where everything seems to be pointing. Based on all of our research that we've done on a lot of this stuff. Now, we're going to switch gears here. Because I want to get into this strange bloodlust that's been happening in our country. As you know, the demons are really starting to show their claws, aren't they? I mean, stand back and think about this for a minute. They're literally calling for blood. It is what it appears from the outside looking in. The anger coming out of the left, just at the thought of RVW being overturned, is palpable. It's unsettling. It reminds me of different stories in the Bible where there was this bloodlust like Sodom and Gomorrah where the, the you know these they were outside these people were outside calling for these angels to come out because they wanted to have relations with them 
You know, this is a, this is what these times like this in history remind me of. You got people just coming unglued, frothing at the mouth about this. Now, did we ever see this from the right for all these years that RVW was legal? Uh, you saw it from time to time, but nothing like this. We kind of put up with it. And we realize that we do have a personal choice and that this is about a ministry and a faith and trying to convince people that the Bible considers these things wrong. And that's where pretty much most people on the right stood with this. We were stunned, but we had to accept whatever they said and we could talk against it and hope that we would get all this overturned at some point. But I don't trust this whole thing. I don't trust it at all. It sounds great. It sounds good. And I'm wondering if this will be the catalyst that they use to get a far right-leaning person elected. This would be the very thing that would drive people in to vote for Thump, wouldn't it? Whereas when you look at his track record on this, if you really take a strong look at his track record on this, and where he stood for decades and decades and decades, it was nothing. It, he was siding more with the people on the left. It wasn't until the Supreme Court nominee that he even moved toward the right on this issue. So do not be deceived. But, you know, sadly, people will go, oh, that's, yes, he's standing up for it. He's the one that got it done. He saved all these babies. And this is what all people, some people will need to go put their voting hat on and stand in a stall with all the other cattle and give their approval. So what is this really about, this whole thing? Well, to me, it's about a clear conscience. It's about gaining permission from men to perform ungodly acts. You guys, legal doesn't mean moral, does it? Never has. Because those are men's rules. And this is when you begin to realize that there is a difference between the way men rule and the way God rules. There are many, many very ungodly things that are legal to do. And this is where Romans 13 falls apart. Falls on its face. Because there is no rule by men under God. It's all rule under God or rule under men. You can't mix the two. You have to choose. Now, the controllers understand that most people don't get that. Right? They have the church fooled. They have the church believing that, hey, if it's legal, then it's okay. And this is where we're going to get into the abomination that causes desolation. This is where we're going to get into things that will be allowed in the church that are highly immoral. It's already happening. And this is when God will become enraged. Things done in his name that he hates. Abominations that he hates being done right in the church. Let me give you an example. Is it moral for a mother to take 80% custody of her children from a perfectly good father? No. I think 99% of people would agree that's not moral. But it's legal and it happens every single day. Most fathers start out at 20% custody. They become weekend, every other weekend dads. That's just the norm. At least it was in California. Happened to me. It steals your connection between your kids because you cannot be a full father when you only have your children 20% of the time. I don't care what anybody says. Is it moral to kill people on the battlefield based on lies? No, but it's perfectly legal. You have basically people coming home that were murderers walking among us. And I could go on and on and on, but you get the point. There's a huge difference between what is legal and what is moral. Now, will RVW be overturned? I don't think ultimately it will. And even if it is, it's still going to fall to the states, isn't it? And that's where we will have conflict and more division in America. I think this whole thing was leaked so that the extreme right could take the stage and scare everybody back into letting RVW stand. 
That's what I think is going to happen. And they're going to they're they're going they're basically going to manufacture an extreme right that doesn't represent all of us. Right? And that's going to scare everybody. They're going to be like, "We don't want that." Because people want permission, don't they? You guys, there's already articles circulating that infer that the right is going to go after birth control next. And then they're going to go after sex outside of marriage and all kinds of other stuff. They want us to believe that the, that if they give in to this thing, if they give in to RVW, then the next thing is going to be Mosaic Law. That's what they want us to believe is going to happen. And this is a scare tactic. And once, basically, the Bible is put on trial, at that point, people are going to reject it. And this is like a reverse psychology thing. That's my guess as to what's happening here. The Bible is basically going to be put on trial at some point. Next thing you're going to hear is all these things about the Bible. And wow, do we really want a country where we're judged like that and this and that? This is where it's already going to head. Now, let me tell you this. Jesus was at the well with a prostitute, wasn't he? And did he condemn her? Did he strike her down? What did he say about stones and casting stones and he without he who is without sin? The people that he was most angry at were the Pharisees who were misleading everybody. So there's a shift, there's a change, isn't there? We went from stoning people in the Old Testament to having mercy under Christ in the New Testament. There was a bit of a change, wasn't there? But what they're going to do is they're going to lead with the Old Testament and Mosaic Law. And, you know, immediate stone. They're going to say, oh, this is where they're going to take all of us. And you're going to see the rise of these extreme right people that will be given a mouthpiece and basically put the Bible on trial. That's what I'm predicting is going to happen with all this. And once people see that, they're gonna, there's going to be riots in the street from the left. They're going to say, no way are we going back to that. No way are we going back to that. That's what I believe is going to happen. So when we boil it all down, what is this really all about? It's about morals, isn't it? It's about who you choose. It's about do you have God in your life and do you feel a conscience... And know when you're doing things wrong, or do you go it alone and do what thou wilt? That's the debate here. It has very little to do with RVW. It just so happens that that issue is a hot button issue. But really, what it boils down to is do you accept God in your life or not? That's what this is really about. It's the godless versus the godly. Now, not to say that all godly people are on the right path. But at least God is in their heart and he's in the back of their mind and they know that they're trying to please God. Anyway, we'll keep an eye on this in the coming days and weeks as time goes on. As we definitely need to keep an eye on RVW to make sure that, you know, they don't try to pull a rope dope on us. Now, let's get into a couple of these other headlines. Apparently, um, there's been a spike in violence over the past several years. Now what the mainstream isn't telling you. About why this is probably happening. Is that the middle class has pretty much been annihilated. The mid And also the media is stoking the right left divide. And has been. They've been stoking race relations. And that generally it's pretty much been a free for all. Ever since the summer riots. They haven't told you that lawlessness is on the rise. Now, here's a story about two 15-year-old boys who assaulted a mother in her own home. They broke in, found the mother hiding in a closet, their four-year-old daughter in Long Island. This is heartbreaking. They caught these boys on videotape here, walking down the street. One of them has been caught already. Now, what's inside of the mind of a person who does something like this? I believe a lot of it has to do with media programming. Now, you might disagree with me on that, but think about this for a second. Imagine that 
there was no TV. Now, I'm not suggesting that there should be no TV. or I'm, I'm asking you to think of a hypothetical. Imagine there is no TV and no media programming and everyone just lives in their neighborhoods and goes on about their life. Would things like this happen? They might, but I believe that a lot of this is programming. And I believe the degree to which these things happen is because of that programming. Now, if you read this article about the rise in violence, here's what experts say is that causing the United States recent spike in violence, they give every other excuse in the book as to why this is happening, except that the media pretty much has been causing this through their policies and their agenda and what they lead with in the media and how they divide our country at every turn. Look at this. America has a violence problem and it doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. Last month, the gunman in Washington opened fire at a college prep school from across the street, ridding it riddling it with more than 200 pop sticks and wounding four people. So they're basically going over some of the shootings that happened. Notice we haven't really had any school scrutings, have we? No, we haven't. Largest ever recorded annual increase in homicides in 2020 compared to 2019. Homicide rate rose 30%. People are going out of their minds. It makes you wonder, right? Well, what was it? 20, let's see, 2020. That was pre-smack scene, wasn't it? So we can't really look at that. But 2021, end of 2021, people just, you know, you get cabin fever. I mean, this is the age-old thing. People are locked up in their houses. Of course, they're going to go crazy. They start sticking people together that aren't supposed to be together for long periods of time. People lose their minds. They start programming them with all this fear, day in and day out. Give them no hope. And then divide them from half the people they know. Isolate them. These are the kinds of things that happen. Unbelievable. There was this plague mentality that has to take a toll on people. Then you start seeing increases in violent crime with a lack of social interaction. So, they blame the whole thing. Of course, it's probably the people. They're going to blame all the people that allowed this to go on as long as it did because they weren't responsible and didn't get smacked the nation get us all back to where we need to be this is what they're going to blame it on but really it was the lockdowns and the shutdowns and the you know and the strict rules this is the kind of stuff that makes people lose their minds this is what makes them start turning on one another now this stuff just drives me nuts. FDA restricts JJ Good Times VidCo19 smack scene due to clud blot risk. Now, many of us had concerns about clud blots going back to the beginning when people started noticing it. Remember the pilots? Remember the Air Force and a lot of people were opting out? Remember the big white elephant in the room where the uh, commercial pilots... There was this unspoken thing where they were didn't want to do it either. And then some of the airlines had to like backtrack out of it and allow them maybe not to be required to do it. Remember there were people dropping out from heart attacks? Well, I don't know. I don't think there was a connection to the smack scenes. That's what they want us to say, right? Well, now look. JJ Good Times has been restricted. Let's read this. U.S. regulators on Thursday strictly limited who can receive J.J. Good Times Smack the Nation due to the ongoing risk of rare but serious clud blots. FDA said that the shot should only be given to adults who cannot receive a different smack scene or specifically request J.J. Good Times. Now, wait a minute. Was this Thump's... Was J.J. Good Times, was that Thumps? Because he's going around saying, oh, the other ones are not good. Use the one I did. This is how, oh, God help me. This is how lame people are. They'll actually believe this man, that his is better. They walk right into it, don't they? I don't remember which one his is, but 
U.S. authorities for months have recommended that Americans start starting their VidCo19 Smack the Nations use Fizzer or Mode Mode Runner instead. So there's a concern. It's limited. What does that tell you? That's alarming. Because wait a minute. Uh, six months ago it was completely safe and effective. And if you said anything otherwise, cancel culture strike you out so they don't even know what a positive test is anymore getting a positive vidco test doesn't necessarily mean you have it again doctors say this is out of women's health let's read this article now that vidco 19 has been around for more than two years and that one variant being more contagious than the last, chances are you or someone you know has come down with it. Some may get away with just a runny nose and a sore throat, while others may have trouble breathing. Regardless, it's not a pleasant experience. Man, this reads like something out of a science fiction movie. So it's totally reasonable for you to wonder, can you get VidCo twice? The answer is yes. People who have had VidCo in the past have some protection against reinfections. Wait a minute, we're not supposed to say that, are we? That being said, mooning of the city to VidCo is not perfect. So it doesn't completely prevent you from getting it again. Hmm. Wow. With each mutation, the mooning of the city from a previous infection doesn't perfectly protect you against new variants. Wow. Okay. So you test positive, but I mean, this just opens up a whole new can of worms. If the tests uh, don't particularly mean you have it, then if you test positive, shouldn't you still be able to get on a plane or go on about your life? I don't know. Anyway, that's a long article. I'm not going to read that whole thing. But it just goes to show there's a lot of confusion surrounding all this stuff. Now, this next article is a little bit troubling because, to me... This seems to be trying to eclipse this new phenomenon coming out about children getting liver disease. Now they're going to blame the pots and pans and plastics, which we know cause all kinds of other stuff, hormonal changes and other problems, but now all of a sudden it causes liver failure. What a perfect way just to, you know, muddy the waters. When all these people come forward with liver failure, they'll just blame it on the pots and pans and plastic containers. I mean, this is so obvious to me, it hurts. Why would they come out with this now? PFAs are known as the forever chemicals because they are slow to break down the environment in the body. Exposure to PFAs has been linked to elevated cancers, low birth weight and immune dysfunction. Now, scientists say that some of the most well-known PFAs may cause liver damage. Well, yeah, if you drink molten plastic, it could do that, I suppose. Unbelievable. More patients are requiring liver transplant late in life, and scientists have identified exposure to industrial chemical compounds as a contributing factor to increased rate of liver disease. Unbelievable. Now you can have mothers sending their children to school with brown paper bags. Again, going to go back to the brown paper bag era. And they're going to blame the plastics that they sent their children to school with the lunches in for their liver failure. This is what they want you to believe in reading between the headlines here. So, kind of a short show today, but that's what I wanted to show you guys and get you guys caught up, caught up on. I w wasn't going to do a show today, but I was like, you guys, we got to talk about this stuff. We got to talk about this stuff because this stuff's really important. Let's go back into the chat chat now. Uh, yeah, I've been looking at. I saw someone put outer range in the chat, and yes, I've been looking at that. We decoded that at least the first five or six episodes already on a previous show. Sometimes I get these decodes out so fast that people miss it, and by the time the series gets popular. Everyone's like, can you decode such and such? I'm like, I, I already decoded that. I decoded that like the week it came out. So always look back on the channel. You can go to the main channel. And there should be a search. Um, what do they call that? Magnifying glass on the front of the channel. Now, for some of you, you told me that that magnifying glass does not show up. 
on the mobile app. But if you're on like a laptop, thanks you guys. Thanks for the people that joined the um the channel membership. I'm seeing that those come through. I missed the first one, but thank you so much. Anyway, um, if you're on a laptop or a tablet and you go to the front page, there's a little magnifying glass in the corner. And you just click on that and type in whatever search terms you want, and it'll search just my channel. And you can and usually I'll put the headline of the show that I decode in the title, so it should show right up. Okay. And you guys, we've decoded almost everything. Um, sometimes I run out of stuff to decode because, you know, we get on these series and stuff pretty much right away. So that's how um, that's how we do it here. All right, let's go into the chat. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Warrior for Truth, Cowboys, Beacon, Marion, Blackbird, Child of God, Gift from God. All right. Thanks, Silent Walk. Thanks, Richard. Ain't buying it. Okay. E A B C Jesus Christ conquered death. Absolutely. Now they're saying Vidco causes permanent brain damage. That's interesting. Weird. Jar Jar Binks or Banks. Hmm. I'll check out my Roku screen. Yeah, I don't know on Roku if it has the magnifying glass, but let me know. Let me know in the comments if you can search my channel on on Roku and search through my channel contents because it's very important you guys a lot of the times these videos get buried buried in the algorithms and you can't find it searching just on YouTube you have to actually come to the channel and search through the channel and that's the only way you're gonna find some of these older decodes we have like 3,000 videos on this channel or something crazy like that so there's a lot of content here and I'll try to get better about re-uploading some of the content you know but I don't want to have our channel just be all re-uploads because that would be boring for a lot of you that have been following the channel. But some of the stuff like the rainbow thing, that was a re-upload. The rainbow history timeline. And that was actually a really good thing to re-upload. So if I start getting a lot of requests for a certain show or something, then I'll go back through, find old decodes, edit them back together, and re-upload them for you guys. Jesus Christ will wipe all the tears from your eyes. Yes, he will. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. Thanks for being by y'all. The FDA approved the brain chip. Oh, wow, Alicia. Anticorona. Yes. Anticorona is Thump's Warp Speed logo. Thanks, Mustard Seed. Yes, it is. It is a, it is a Reiki symbol. And that symbol... In the logo for Warp Speed, we did a full decode on. As soon as Warp Speed hit, we decoded the head of Warp Speed, which was Monsef Salawi, and his roots into bioelectronics. Integrating your brain with medicine and electronics. That's what he was working on. He was out of GlaxoSmithKline. Monsef Salawi. And they came up with this logo, which of course is a Reiki logo. We decoded all that. So thanks for bringing that up, Mustard Seed. Appreciate that. And that might be a good one to re-upload. But people get upset with me when I, you know, bag Trump. You know, there's a good 20% of the people on this channel who still believe in the right-left paradigm. And anytime I put up anything negative about Trump, they get upset. Um, but that's what started all this. Warp Speed is what started all of this. Warped Seed... Warp speed, draw deep backwards, warp speed backwards. Um, all of these are references to needles and things like this. Okay, what else do we have? Warp speed is an anagram for spear gun. Wait a minute, there's no W in there. All right. I really enjoy your guys' comments in the chat. I wish I could spend more time here. Spells that trick us into participating when we purchase these things. Carolyn says, upload it. Okay, maybe we'll do that. The, yeah. It's all about copper. Yes, it is. Truth can be divisive. Yes, it can. GR Cleave. 
Yes, Eastern mysticism coming to the West. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to normalize Christians to Eastern mysticism. That's what it was all about. And there, and now that you know, in hindsight, we can see how things have progressed, and what this was really all about. It was preparation for something. All of this is preparation for. It's the first steps in a longer game plan. I think we can all agree that that's where all this is headed. And we're seeing these 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 effects start to trickle out, but with the censorship. There is never any widespread acceptance that things are happening to people's health. And so it all gets dumbed down and washed away and whitewashed and we never get the full truth. But if you look closely, you'll see these weird health trends beginning to occur. People going bald, losing their hair. Many, many um, people who own hair salons have come into the comment section and told me, that there is an epidemic of hair loss that they've never seen in their 20, 30 plus year career. You've got children coming down with weird conditions that they had never have before. And look, if it's mentioned in the media, then it's probably happening 5 to 10 times the rate that they're actually admitting to. The only reason why they admit it in the media is to cover it up. They have to say something. And so they basically cover it up they mention it and then give an explanation to explain it away that's the, so when you see these things coming up in the media know that it's happening tenfold beyond what they're admitting to and so this is not good you guys it's not good so what else what other things are happening Okay. Sister-in-law lost a lot of hair after Vidco. Yep. Notice how they're blaming Vidco for that. Look at we. What are we? Three years into this? Two and a half years? And why all of a sudden are is people losing their hair for Vidco? Don't you think this would be? Don't you think in twenty twenty one? Before we had a smack scene that they would have noticed that where people were losing their hair from Vidco? Uh, yeah. Why all of a sudden now they're admitting to it? It begs the question, is was Vidco really the thing causing the hair loss? Or is it something else? You gotta, you gotta remember the timeline, you guys. 20, what was it? 2019, end of 2019. First cases of Vidco. We went all of 2020 with no smack scene. And then at the end of 2020, we got a smack scene. Then we went through all of 2021 with the whole smack scene drive. And think about all the events that happened during the, that timeline. Things emerging as and things being blamed on either the smack scene or Vidco or both. Very weird. Very, very weird. Wow, they put... Look at this. They don't let you say God is love anymore. Maybe it's because of the emojis. I don't know. So. What else is going on? Yep, November 2019. That's when it all started. Alright. What else? The skies... Yeah, I believe that could have something to do with it. G Wiz was mixed in there with it all, wasn't it? G Wiz um coming online. G Wiz and beyond. Yes. So, you have to wonder. You have to wonder. All right. Uh, Native American trackers lost their tracking ability when the army cut their hair. Now that's a subject I want to get much deeper into. The hair. Now, many of you told me that, what was that film uh, with the trees and, um, uh, did, 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 let me think of it. Um, where they communicate through their hair. Starts with an A. Uh, why am I drawing a blank today? It's actually a movie. Very huge movie. Made billion dollars. 
The movie is called... Let's see who gets it first. There's a huge tree and hair. <laughs> oh. Avatar, thanks. I'm just me. You just be you. That's a cool name. So, Avatar, yeah. So, I might need to re-watch that film, but I don't know. I, I watched the film. I think I even decoded it. I think the focus of the decode when we did it was all about the tree the tree and it was like the garden of eden and the trees that once reached the heavens i think that was the focus of that decode but i don't know like maybe we need to look at the hair aspect to all that because remember that's how they communicated maybe i'll scour the bible again and see if we can find anything else about the hair because there's something, this is what it's going to become all about, you guys. It's all steering back into that direction again. With You see more and more of these celebrities shaving their heads bald, going bald. Some give excuses that it's alopecia. Others give excuse. you know, others say that this is just their look. They're, this is going to become the new thing. So. Remember how... What was it? The hairdressers. Remember the hairdressers during the spamdemic? People were walking around with shaggy hair. Why? Because they, they would close the beauty salons. Remember that? So what was that about? It's like they want us to have our hair long and shaggy when they're up to something. And that was during the whole jive G, wasn't it? When they have these salons closed. But then, other times, they want us to have our heads shaved. So, it's really weird. I wish... Sometimes I wish that we could just see things a little bit more clearly. Because sometimes we guess, you know, we're kind of guessing at some of this stuff. But we're trying to observe our surroundings and try to figure out what these people are up to. Yes, the quarantine cut. Thanks, Janine. Yeah, so you guys remember. So you know I'm not just making this up. There's some kind of fascination with the hair. Well, of all places, why would you shut down a hair salon and not let people get haircuts? You had men walking around with the hair falling over their eyes because they couldn't get a haircut. Women were going crazy. They were like, we want this to be over because I can't get my hair done. Weird. I wonder if they just were trying to coax people just to shave it all off, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? God has every... Hair on her head numbered. There's some, that means something, doesn't it? Ears to uh, ears to hear, eyes to see. That has significance. Why would that be in the Bible? Makes you wonder. All right, you guys. Well, it's fun hanging out on this Friday. Uh, we'll see you guys Monday for sure. Sometimes I upload on the weekends if you're new to the channel. Sometimes we'll upload on the weekends as well. Maybe I'll put together and edit the. Uh, the uh warp speed logo videos and re-upload that for the weekend maybe i'll do that for tomorrow i'll start working on that right now and i'll get that up over the weekend now bear notice you know people that attack me for bringing out this stuff about thump um i'm gonna just block you okay because it's not about him it's about both sides are compromised they're all working together okay so that's just fair Fair, fair notice. I mean, you can have a different opinion, but don't attack me and say, oh, you're you're horrible, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I won't put up with that. You can have an opinion and say, I don't agree with you, um, but that's it. And give your evidence of what you think. We can have a discussion about it, like two adults. But this childlike behavior of people just character assassinating and attacking people, I don't put up with that on the channel anymore. Well, I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I love all of you. And uh, take care and be safe, everybody.